Most rooftop pools sit on acoustic isolation systems, usually spring mounts or elastomeric pads. Their job is to protect the building below from vibration and impact noise. But here's the problem. Once the builder hands over the project, these systems are almost never maintained. No inspections, no triggers for servicing, and no accountability. And while they sit out of sight, components seize, corrode, or shift. By the time anyone notices, the damage is already done and very expensive. At Nature, we recommend annual inspections for all spring-based isolation systems. Without proactive maintenance, failure isn't just possible, it's inevitable. The real threat to these systems isn't just weather, it's chlorine gas. Chlorine gas is two and a half times heavier than air, which means it sinks and settles in the exact zone where these isolation systems are installed, directly beneath the pool shell. In poorly ventilated cavities, it lingers. Over time, it corrodes even 316 marine grade stainless steel. And when chlorine reacts with sweat, oils or contaminants, it forms chloramines, an even more aggressive chemical compound. We've seen spring systems completely seized with rust in less than five years because chlorine exposure was never factored into the design. This isn't theoretical, it's happening right now across the country. The durability of an isolation system always comes back to materials. We use marine grade stainless steel springs and hardware because standard grade components fail quickly in rooftop environments. Unfortunately, many builds still use a lower quality offshore manufactured parts to save money up front. But when a spring system fails under a fully tiled or water-filled pool, the cost of repair can often be enormous, often requiring major structural work. If you cut corners on materials, you will pay for it later. Right now, there's no Australian standard that specifically covers acoustic isolation systems for rooftop pools. The NCC touches on sound transmission, but not vibration control. That leaves it up to engineers to apply sound judgment and tailor systems to every project. For pools above bedrooms or sensitive spaces, low deflection spring mounts like the C8 or XDRP series are ideal. On commercial rooftops, elastomeric pads may be enough. And for projects balancing cost with performance, Hybrid systems can deliver reliable results without over-engineering. The key is that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Every system has to be designed around budget, performance, and serviceability. There's one golden rule that determines long-term success. If you can't access it, you can't inspect it, and you can't maintain it. This is where many projects fail. Access is often sacrificed for the sake of a floating architectural look, but without space for technicians to check springs and alignment, maintenance becomes impossible. The NCC requires 400 millimeters of clearance under the pool for inspection purposes. Access isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. And if missed in design, it's nearly impossible to fix later. Rooftop pools are striking features, but beneath them, acoustic isolation systems protect the building, its occupants and your reputation. The failures are silent until they're not. Maintain your systems, use quality materials, and always design for access. Now let's talk about one of the most common and costly mistakes we see on rooftop pool projects. The equipment room. The biggest stuff up, cramming equipment into spaces that have no airflow. I've lost count of how many jobs I've walked onto where the heat pumps and chlorinators are boxed into a corner, no breathing room, no clearance for servicing, and no thought for future access. Sometimes the slabs poured, the walls erupt, and then someone asks, hey, where should all the pool equipment go? By that point, it's not design anymore, it's damage control. Here's the problem. Heat pumps don't generate heat, they move it. If they're boxed in, they just keep recirculating their own cold air. That kills performance, shortens their lifespan, and sends your power bill through the roof. Here's what we recommend based on real specs. For any installation, give it space. At least two and a half meters clearance in front for airflow and servicing. 600 mil on either side, and 800 mil to the rear. That's the minimum for proper ventilation and maintenance access. If you can't give it that, you'll need forced ventilation. And that's something you should plan before construction starts. Because once the rise is framed and the ductwork's locked out, cutting vents in later becomes an expensive headache. Good equipment design isn't just about where it fits, it's about how it breathes and operates. Plan your space early and your system will thank you forever.